the connection that we're all developing by using different types of social media, um, using the internet, provides science with a really great way to interact with people, with um, different gardeners, um, with, with people interested in taking photographs of different things. And it's creating a really powerful set of data that we can use to track things like climate change, track things like environmental changes. So you, as a gardener, can take pictures of your backyard, take write down um, and enter onto your computer different events that are happening in your, your yard, and contribute to a multitude of different projects that allow scientists in, uh, in collaboration with, um, with people everywhere to answer all sorts of questions we couldn't access until we had the ability to um, get a lot of people involved in collecting data. One um, good example of this um, would be um, images that are uploaded to a, a, a place like Flickr. Um, by using the tags associated with those images, we may be able to track different events like flowering or snowfall. And um, the maps that we'll be able to create year after year after year will give us documentation of how the timing of these events changed. So the ability to, um, to get a lot of people helping and to give a lot of people feedback um, on what's happening in their yards has created a whole new relationship between science and the general public um, that's really sort of blurring the lines between them. And I think it's, it's sort of a, a magical thing for a scientist to interact with the public in, in that intimate a way. <laughs>